Okay, welcome to Screen Time. It is movie streaming and everything in between. Gary Tangway and Drew Yato. And this is a personal favorite of ours. It's on Apple Plus. Uh, I watch it on my phone. Some people can't stand to watch it on their phone. They have to watch it on the big screen. But I watch this thing on my phone. I'm addicted to it. It's called Slow Horses. Uh, in the actual show, they refer to it as Slough House. So I'll give you the quick backstory here is that M um, MI5, the British, you know, Secret Service or spe uh, British version yeah, of the CIA. Yeah. yeah, Secret Service. Yeah. The Bond people, right? They have this place where spies who screw up are sent. And it's called Slow Horses. And it's like you're well, they're called Slow Horses. The house is called Slow House. And it's this junky building. Right. And I mean, it's just occupy. if you messed up, that's where they send you. Slow Horses. And they, and they hope you quit. The whole idea help, is right. to hope you quit. They hope you quit. So the slow horses get sent to Slough House. Gary Oldman stars, and he is the head guy at uh, at Slough House, and he's leading the crew. Drew, Can I jump in here? You could jump in. Yeah, it, it's based on uh, novels by a guy named Mick Heron, who's British, right? And they are fantastic. I read the first two, which are the first two seasons. He's written eight, so that sounds good. Like there might be eight seasons, but I've heard Gary Oldman's not in for that long. But anyway, um, he, he, I'm telling you, a lot of it's on the page. And as Gary said, Gary Oldman's fantastic. He plays Jackson Lamb, who's the head spy. And he has quite a background because he was involved in all kinds of stuff during the Cold War. And he's there to oversee these guys. And he's sort of been banished, but we're not quite sure. Uh, and he is a unique character. Well, self-imposed, it seems. Uh, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, because what happened was, and I don't, again, we don't want to spoil it for anybody, but the Gary Oldman character, Jackson Lamb, was one of the top agents in the organization. Yeah. I mean, he was like right at the top. And something happened, as you mentioned, during the Cold War, and it involved a close friend of his, and something had to be done mm. that just made him want to quit. And he said, you know what? Stick me in Slough House. And that's where I'll be, and I don't really care anymore. So when he gets in there with these with this band of misfits, 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 Gary, he kind of, you know, he says it at one point. The character says, you know, you're a bunch of idiots, but you're my idiots, yeah. right? And that's he has an affection for them, even though they're all screw ups. But he and, never expresses that affection to them. Quite the opposite. Yeah, he does. Right, but like, but he said that to Chris, Kristen Scott Thomas um plays well she's number two of the organization so his contact is her and they always meet on a mi5 park she's the second bench. seat as they say at mi5 second seat at mi5 so they always meet on a park bench right and he said it to her and you know she said like they're a bunch of dimwits and he said yeah but they're my dimwits you know that's the only time you ever saw him show any sort of affection to his crew and this young actor jack loudon uh, he plays River Cartwright, and just the name alone, Jackson Lamb. I mean, Drew, you talk about how names are so important. Jackson Great. Lamb is Gary Ullman's character, and River Cartwright is the young spy who screwed up, who got sent to Slough's. I mean, two and he didn't names. really screw up. He got screwed by. He got screwed. He got screwed who, by. Who someone. was jealous and wanted to put him in his place and keep him from uh, getting promoted. Right. But right. it, nobody else saw it or believed it, but it's true. And he's stuck in Slow House. And his grandfather was at the top right. of MI5 at one point. Yeah, you played by Jonathan Price. Correct. Who's terrific in this. Um, it's very smart writing. Uh, you, I really don't have a clue. When I watched the second season, I had no idea where it was going. And what happens in the second season is Sakata, which is a group of Russian agents that have blended into the community, have been activated. And well, it was a rumor that they existed with MI5. They didn't believe it once the Cold War ended. And, you know, they name them cicadas because, like the insect, they bury themselves underground and emerge, uh, you know, in 20 years. Right. So, um, yeah, they. This is all about it, it. It opens beautifully because you know right away something's up, and you know that's 
the way you want it. Well, then you know something's up, but I didn't know what was up. And I was thoroughly surprised by the end. Were you? Did you see any of it coming? Uh, no, no. I was surprised. It was, it, I mean, that's the beauty of this. Um, like I said, I read a couple of the books. So I'd read the book for the first series, first uh, season. And the ending of the series was actually better than the ending of the book. And, the, and McCarran's a great writer, but they actually improved it, which I didn't think they could do. Uh, I didn't finish this second book because I, I just wanted to watch the show. So Right, which says something, it. that you actually want to watch the show as opposed to read the book. Yeah, and they're great it, writers on the show. They write terrific writers on the show. In, in, the, in the second season, you have, you know, some present, uh, current themes. Terrorism uh, mm -hmm. is involved. Uh, terrorism within the British organization. Um, uh, a plot is being planned. And one of the great quotes or the great lines that I wrote down that Jackson Lamb, Gary Ullman says, and I'm going to do it in a very bad British accent. Sometimes the only way to find out why a trap has been set is to walk into it. Yeah. It's a great yeah. line. Yeah. It's a great line. And Omen plays a spy. Oh, there's another line in there where at the beginning, there is um, an MI5 agent retired who's murdered on a train. And they want it to make look like a heart attack. And one of the young, somebody says, well, you know, he was... In his 60s, he drank, he smoked, he had a heart condition. Come on, he had a heart attack. And Omen, who smokes all the time, who drinks all the time, who looks like shit, turns around and says, well, what's wrong with that? You know, one of those <laughs> things. Yeah. So he's not the type of spy that is going to outrun anybody. He's not going to beat anybody up. He's just smarter than everybody else. He, he just outthinks them. And, and you can tell he's just got these decades of experience that allow him to overcome you know whatever so far two seasons of plots the first season is terrific it's about a kidnapping they want to blame on somebody else and they have to track them down and it's interesting because slow horse the slow horses get involved they got involved in the first season they get involved in this one only this one it's actually intentional but i'm not going to say by whom right they get brought in right the first one they just kind of they got to get stuck in it and everybody thinks it's a dead end, you know, but they end up being personally involved. I do want to talk about one actor, um, Demry Burns, Dustin Demry Burns, who plays Min Harper. Yeah. Man. Okay. Terrific. We don't want to ruin Min. We don't, we don't want to ruin it, but this is why it's a great show because you just expect the unexpected and it's, there's not a lot of, I mean, the great thing about the Brits is that they can scare you. They can keep you on the edge of your seat. They can keep you wondering what's coming around the corner and not necessarily blow up a building or cut somebody's head off or, you know, have some hand put, come out of a grave. Right. I mean, that none of that happens in here. There's, um, there's some violence. I mean, some, yeah. you know, uh, but. You they just, sprinkle it with humor, though, which is really they, interesting. They and it's not just that Jackson Lamb. Everybody's got sort of an edge. And right. there's just great characters. There's this tech guy who is awful. He's just, nobody likes him, and he doesn't like anybody. But he's brilliant at what he does. Ho is his right. name. Um, he, he, the characters are just amazing. It's an older woman who was connected to the guy right. that Jackson Lamb was involved with involved with before all slow horses came about and she's a recovering alcoholic and you can tell there's just something going on between the two of them and i don't mean romantically but he's got his he keeps his eye on her for a lot of reasons that come clear at the end of the first season saskia reeves great yes they're all great. I mean, this and is what I, I don't know. The here's the thing. You know, here's the thing, Drew. Like, Christopher Chung plays Roddy Ho. Um, and Dustin Demery Burns, I wrote in this down, plays Min Harper. I don't know who any of these people are. No, but, you know. But they're unbelievable. You've been streaming long enough to have done the Broad Churches and the Harper right. Valley and all that right. stuff to know they're just really clever. You know, you got to hand it to them. 
you know, bodyguard, all the good ones, man. They're they're just Our bodyguard was great too. We should do that one we, at some point. We can do that one at some point. It's just I, I hate to come on every week and gush about something. And if you talk to my wife, you'll know that I don't love all these things. But I happen to like these. And yeah, but you know, you know, we should do some shows we don't like sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> talk about I, it. I spent as as some people know, and some people don't know. I spent most of my career telling everybody what was wrong with things in sports. Yeah. I don't mind gushing. I really don't. I really, because I think people want to know what's good. So well, I get, yeah. you know, so, I mean, if we haven't talked about something, then you probably know that it might not be that great. So um, the one thing about the writing in this as well is, and we talked about this last week, I can't tell what's the main plot or the subplot and it works. Like last well, week, yeah, because made... it's complicated. And and here's the other thing, and I want to issue this warning. Kind of like Jack Ryan, you're a little muddied at first, and you're not quite sure what's going on. And part of the reason is because the Russians are involved here. So this is like Russian agents supposedly waking up, and Jack Slam goes back to see somebody who he brought in as a defector. And I'm going to give you the names. I'm going to give you six names who you got to pay attention to. Pop off. Mm -hmm. I won't say anything more about that. Katinsky, who's the guy I just mentioned, the guy who he brought in to defect and right. thought he was low level. Chernitsky, who's the guy involved in the beginning that triggers all this. Pashkin and Nevsky. Right, there's five Russian names. So you're scratching your head going, wait a minute. When, they, when they're referring to someone, you go, wait a minute, was that the bald guy or is that the guy right. who was the defector? Is that the guy who is they want to take over for the current Russian leader? And, and you're confused. And then you just throw in Peter and Carol, who are two bodyguards for Pashkin, and they start throwing seven Russian names around. You're going to stop at some point. If you had the book, you'd go back and, and look and see, wait a minute, which one is this? In in the show yet, I mean, my wife will stop me and say, all right, you got to help me out here. I don't know who's who. And then we got to go back a little. Um, so just a warning, pay attention to the Russian names. It, and they give, the people are different looking enough that you can associate a name with a person, but you don't think that when it first starts, when you first start watching. What What's so hard to, what's so hard to talk about this is that there are so many surprises in it. Yeah. In that I could think of like three off the top of my head mm -hmm. and there when we talk about the the terrorist attack right and how it unfolds yep. i thought it was going one way yep. and it goes completely everybody the other way. think that like i'm like well, okay what's going on here uh when you talk about what's going and it's, on it's perfectly organic it grows totally. out of it's not forced on. at all so so afterwards you go oh yes of course it makes sense um yep. talking about min harper and his storyline and and how they executed it was so creative i didn't see that coming and yeah. in the end you know so you know when you have jack ryan you mentioned there's the main plot and we know the two subplots and then eventually in the series the subplot becomes the main plot but for the majority of this story and just so you understand what i'm talking about i couldn't figure out whether when they were at the airport in the country was that the main plot or was jackson lamb running around the city was that the main plot? And that's well, what, what happens is you, in the beginning, okay, the question to be answered is who killed Dickie Bo? Right. Dickie Bo was, a, was a, a low level MI5 guy who gets killed in the very beginning. So I'm not giving anything away. And so you think, well, who killed him? But who killed him triggers, wait a minute, the cicadas, cicadas and are they right. real? And that's really the plot. But all this other stuff gets dumped onto it because it's all connected. And I think that's what you're referring to when you say the subplot, because suddenly these other things enter in, but they're all connected. It's great. It's yeah. great. Watch it. It's worth your time. Yeah. It's worth your time. You may have to stop it a couple of times and write down the Russian names, or like me, go to Wikipedia and <laughs> I'll give you a little recap of the episode after you watch oh, it. Oh, that, I'll go to IMDB. Absolutely. IMDB, but I, I like... Uh, I like Wiki. All right. Slow Horses. Check it out. Starring Gary Oldman. Uh, it's on Apple TV Plus. And coming up later on Screen Time, 
on our uh, on our YouTube channel and also on uh, wherever you get our podcast, Spotify or iTunes. Drew and I will be doing the top five Gary Ullman films. And when you go to the IMDb page and you films or TV series, yes, yep, at the, uh, uh, at pieces of work, right? Yes, yeah. it's very. I thought, oh, I'm five is going to be easy. It's no. more difficult than I thought. It's very difficult. Very difficult than I thought. Yeah. Uh, and and once again, we'll probably be different with that, which is good. All right, all right for Giuliano and Gary Tangway, Slow Horse, check it out. Apple TV Plus, uh, Screen Time, movies and streaming, and everything in between. Mm.